Welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can see right behind me, it is incredibly beautiful. It has been snowing very intensively here in Denmark for the past two days. And as you can see, the place where I've been to just about a month ago, it is absolutely unrecognizable whatsoever. You can see the trees with such a thick layer of snow, just everything completely covered. It is absolutely so beautiful. So join me on this winterly and snowy adventure and let's see if we can capture anything beautiful. Let's go. And the first panorama of the night that I'm gonna start with is the scene right behind me, as you can see. So I already have set up my uh, tripod with the sky tracker that's, that is not aligned yet. And I have set up my uh, camera on it. And I think I'm gonna do just this big panorama up with a 14 millimeter lens. So I'm gonna pan the camera all the way up to Cassiopeia over there. So, let's jump right to it. So I'm thinking for the settings that I'm gonna use for all the images <clears throat> with and without the sky tracker, I've set the 25 second exposure time. The aperture is fully open at f1.8 and the ISO is 2000. while the panorama is still in the making. I was actually very unsure if I should continue my uh, trip over here because as I left the home, while the sky was totally free from any clouds, the air was actually filled with uh, the ice fog suddenly. And only until I stopped at the parking spot here in the national park, the sky just got completely clear as you can see. So I'm really happy that I took the chance and just continued to carry on. Absolutely beautiful. so I just finished shooting the first panorama of the night. Anyway, I think it's time to switch location and to look for some other cool places here in the forest because when you stand still and when it's minus 10, minus 12 <laughs> outside, your feet are really freezing. So let's go. I just came across this <clears throat> absolutely beautiful valley where we have quite a lot of fallen trees but in the background I simply love how the pines are aligned and even though you cannot see that much of the Milky Way because I'm shooting the opposite side from the core it's still gonna make a very nice composition so I'm gonna use my 14 millimeter lens for the next image and I will place my camera in the portrait mode and then I will take a one single exposure with the half speed with the tracker on. The 
the uh, the Orion constellation is already visible above the tree line even though I'm kind of deep in the valley but I think I'm gonna go to the other side of the lake and see if I can capture uh, some geminids that are still hopefully left over from the geminid meteor shower Funny enough, but it was my first time photographing the Orion constellation in its full scale and in the proper conditions this dark sky season. Although there was a really beautiful tree that I passed a couple of minutes ago, I didn't seem to find its alignment towards the Orion aesthetic enough and ended up working on the next photograph while standing on top of the frozen lake. Before heading back home, I decided to go all the way back to the first spot and make one last vertical panorama of the snowy giants under the slowly rising winter gems. I switched back to the 14 mil lens and slowly began to work my way from the snowy landscape up towards the Cassiopeia and our neighbor Andromeda galaxy. Snow actually makes the typically dark landscape to appear almost as bright as the night sky when photographing with low exposure. Although typically I love exposing the sky for at least 60 seconds, this night I wanted to keep the simplicity of landscape astrophotography while still creating aesthetic compositions. Spending four hours among such a beautiful scenery felt really like a soul-warming experience, even despite the low temperature of negative 12 degrees Celsius. Especially I was able to bring so many cool photographs home with me, everything else was just another challenge. Thank you for joining my astrophoto adventures, and I'll see you next time. Clear skies.